Alrighty, uh, today our job is to review for the midterm and whatever time we have left we'll go up to the lab and do what we do up in lab. Um, let me pull down, I, I posted the review for the midterm either today or yesterday, I don't remember when, but it should be up there now. Let's take a look at it. In format, it'll be roughly the same as the midterm with one, with really only one uh, significant change, uh, and that is there'll be uh, like ten times the questions, I think. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I, I've changed the, the programming uh, part of it. Oh, look, look. Here I am about to take a picture. <laughs> Someone asked me why I, my, my, I was the only one tagged in, in the pictures on Facebook. Pardon me? I'm not, uh, on Facebook I am, yeah. And it was like, well, because I went in and tagged myself and no one else did, you know. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of a simple question. But there I am. There I am. Uh, at any rate, um, no, that was, uh, it was in College Center. Yeah, I do. Thanks. Um, um, you, you know, there's there's the play, there's the stretch by the cafeteria, and where Starbucks is. Then there's like that whole other area on the other side of the staircase. That was that was the area where it was. Yeah, with the big, there's a big TV screen in there. And <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, there was something. All right. The big difference is how I'm handling the programming section. Um, writing tests about programming uh, is difficult. And, and I know what you're thinking. Taking tests about programming ain't no picnic either. Uh, but it's tough because, I mean, face it. You know, if, if the job is to write a full program, thinking back on my career as a programmer and, and when I still do it, there's days when I get nothing done. And nothing works, <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it is. It's like there's days when, you know, what's the old saying? Some days you eat the bear, some day the bear eats you. You know, some days you eat the code, some days the code eats you. So I can understand that, you know. And I can understand, especially in a timed environment, um, you know, and especially in a test environment where you're prone to be nervous and so on and so forth, uh, I, I, can, I can easily see why there could be a potential issue, you know. Not to mention eight at night, yeah, yeah, that's that's true as well. Um, and um, re, you know, in reality, programming is is more of a marathon than a sprint, right? You know, how you do for any given hundred yard dash is less important than how you do for the twenty six miles, you know. And those two hours is sort of the hundred hundred yard dash. So I've changed the programming section to be like this, and this has its downsides too, by the way. All right. Instead of giving you a program to write, I will give you tasks to write. So essentially you'll do a piece of it. For example, I might ask you to write a function that does this. That's all you have to do. You don't have to call the function. You don't have to create a class. You don't have to do anything other than what is listed there. So if I say write a function that takes two arguments uh, that are integers, uh, x and y, adds them together and returns the result, you know, all you would have to do would be something like this. I hope that's right. <laughs> but that's all you'd have to do. You wouldn't have to like call it. You wouldn't have to like create a class and put it inside it. You just need to do what is listed in there. Now the downside of this is, is 
it's not really easy to test if you got it right. All right. So I'm hoping that breaking it down in smaller pieces will make it easier because if you have trouble with one piece, at least it won't affect your ability to do the next piece. All right. That's, that's the other sort of problem writing a whole program is if there's five steps, if you get step two wrong, chances are that may mess you up for step three, four, and five. All right. So each way has its downside. Uh, in the past, I've, I've tried several strategies. I've given take-home tests. I've given uh, tests like we had for the midterm. And I've given tests like this. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, you know. Um, uh, that, that, that's really the, the chief difference. Uh, as far as what's going to be on the test, um, as I say in the review, it, it really doesn't matter if I call this a comprehensive test or not, it's comprehensive. All right. Obviously, if you don't know how to write a function, something that we did in the first half of the class, you can't do any of the stuff that we learned in the second half of the class. So. You know, the focus and the emphasis will be on stuff since the midterm, but that doesn't absolve you from knowing how to do the stuff before the midterm. All right. Um, three parts. Concepts, OO design, and programming. The concept parts, again, the, the purpose of that part is to ask you questions that I can't tell from any other means. All right. So, I... <laughs> It, it cracks me up just passing students and hear things they say. I, I heard a student make a really funny comment uh, on my way in here today, and it, I just keep coming back to it. I saw the professor he made it about just walking past, and, I, you know, it's very unprofessional of me, but then again, I'm also human, so I can't help but chuckle. Uh, at any rate, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, for example, you can write the code to make an interface, but to understand why, you would want to make an interface is another question, right? So I can't tell if I tell you make an interface, I can't tell if you know even what an interface is for. All you may have know is the syntax for creating an interface. Now unless I'm going to give you some gigantic program where you'd have to figure out where the interfaces are, but again, in a time test environment that isn't that good. You know, so a question might be, why do we make interfaces? What, you know, what is, a, what is an example, or give an example of an interface that you might create in this problem. All right, so again, uh, that's something I can't tell from coding, and I suppose some of those things, like the interface, I might be able to tell from the OO diagram, but that's kind of what the questions will be uh, like. You know, that's sort of my philosophy on those questions. I can't tell from anything else that we've done in class, either uh, test-wise or, or, or project-wise. OO design will be very similar to what we've done before. You may be asked to do any of these, all right? You may be asked to show like what constructors you might create, what static variables you might create, uh, what the signatures of methods are, what you would make public, private, uh, and protected, what would be an abstract class, uh, interfaces, and so on. Virtually the same as, as uh, the, what we had for the midterm, of course, not the exact same, but the same sort of problem. And again, and the, and the last part is, again, the short programming exercises, where you'll be given a piece of code or the other potential uh, is I might ask you what a piece of code does. For example, I might say, you know, I might do something where, you know, I'm calling a function polymorphically and I might ask, what will this function return? And you have to understand polymorphism and this and that and the other to, to get the right answer. All right. So you might write a section of code, you might look at a, a line of code, um, or not a line of code, a, a set of lines of code, and, and tell me what it would, what the effect of it would be, what it would do. All right. As far as general topics go, everything covered up to the midterm. All right. See the midterm study guide. The stack in the heap. Now that's something that we probably talked about prior to the midterm, but again, it's something that's really sort of critical to understand how that stuff works. Instance variables, variables versus local variables. 
primitives versus objects, constructors, static variables, boxing and unboxing, exceptions, the GUI stuff, the serialization, deployment, and Java on the web. All right. Any questions about the structure of the, the midterm or the content or anything along those lines? Yes? Yeah, it, it, it sort of will be like, yeah, for the, uh, uh, Ashley's in a, another one of my classes and definitely the programming part, the, the first part and the last part will be like those, those quizzes. Right. Uh, there isn't anything comparable to the OO diagram on those quizzes, but yeah, the first and last part will be, will be like that. Other questions? Do all those things sound familiar to you? Is there any of them that you, any of them that you don't understand? Uh, I was going to say, I would be very surprised if someone didn't have a question about boxing, because I believe we mentioned it, but we didn't spend tons of time on it. Boxing is, and unboxing is the notion that there are, uh, for primitives, there are classes which sort of, sort of um, exist as sort of wrappers to those classes. Why do you do that? For one reason you do that is because um, an array list only takes objects. So you could not create an array list of ints, right? Because ints are primitive, not, not objects. But you could create an array list of integers. And what boxing and unboxing does, it allows you to more or less treat uh, a, an integer and an int the same. In instructions. Now there's more implications on that and so on. But for example, if I were to do something like this, You might expect that to fail, all right, uh, because x is an int and y is an integer. However, uh, the boxing, what that does is it says, okay, I'm going to take this int, which is a primitive, and box it up and make an object out of it. So I can do an assignment just as though it was uh, another int, all right. Uh, and unboxing is sort of the reverse, where I could say something like, z equals y times 2. In that case, it sort of unboxes it. It takes the int part out of that integer object and uses it as though it was an int. All right. Um, other classes don't work that way for the most part. Um, so that's what boxing and unboxing is. The real big advantage of that is, is again, like, you can then put, uh, uh, if you could then put an array list of ints, of, of integers. You couldn't create an array list of ints unless you box them as integers. Yeah, it does all that for you. Right. Right. I'm pretty sure this would work. I'm not sure. You might have to say equals new integer. That I'm not 100% sure on. But effectively, you definitely can do this, and that will work. Question, other questions? Yeah. Yes. No, no, it's not one, it's, it's, you know, think of it like, think of a package, uh, the, the question is, 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 you know, how do you decide how to divide your classes? 
for one thing, in this example, I wanted to have more than one package, all right? So I had to put one in one and one in the other, all right? You would divide it uh, in a way like you might divide your code if you were just putting it in different folders, you know? Uh, you'd come up with some sort of logical way to group stuff together, and you'd then go in and put stuff together in a package. So what I had, I had a GUI and I had conversions. Then if I had other conversion objects, maybe to convert uh, distances or to convert weights or to convert speeds or anything like that, I put also put those classes in that conversion. If I had other GUIs to do those, I'd put those in the GUIs. So you sort of look for just a logical division uh, with that. Uh, that's not to say that two people couldn't take the same problem and maybe do a little bit different way of packaging it up. But, you know, as long as it's logical and, and you, you know, you, you, you do it consistently, that should be fine. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, even in that case, were I doing that, were that a real project, I might even put those in the same package. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to demonstrate two packages. So I put them in two. So, you know, it, that's kind of like saying, you know, what's the best way to divide your uh, files on your computer? All right. Well, you know, you might say, well, I'm going to have my pictures, my music, and my text documents. Then the text documents, I might have my work and school. And work, maybe you have um, your, your paid job and volunteer work. Or maybe it's not necessary to separate them. You know, depending on the volume and all that, you decide what makes sense. And maybe school, maybe you have a different folder for each class, or maybe you have a different folder for CISS classes, and then a, a folder for each specific class in there. Really, it's what makes sense to you doing it. Uh, what, what sort of logical scheme to use to divide it. Um, having some sort of strategy is, 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 is the key as opposed to some specific strategy to say do it this way. All right, follow some convention, uh, establish some convention and, and stick to it as opposed to saying, well, this is how it ought to be. Other questions? The conversion, right. yeah. Yes. Yeah. What was the statement again? Could you read it from your notes? Mm -hmm. Java C. the path to, and that was something like edu slash Lorraine dot 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 slash, yeah, yeah, first GUI. Okay, first of all, this, the, the, let, let's, let's look back at, at how this was, all right? The way this was is I was in a directory that I'll call my root for my application. It's not necessarily the root directory of the disk, but we'll call it my root directory. All right? And inside that was an edu folder, a Lorraine CCC dot folder, um, a CISS folder, a Java folder, and then a GUI folder and a conversions folder, or something like that. All right. So in this folder was this directory structure. That root doesn't have to be up your C. 
no, it doesn't have to be. I, I'm, I'm saying root. That this is this is sort of the root for purposes of discussion of this application. It's not really. It's not like C colon backslash. Right? It's not like the, the the drives root. It's sort of the logical root for this application. All right. Now, in fact, you know what? Rather than me running on the board, let me just do it. All right. That'll probably be easier to do. Let me find the examples. You do. Okay. All right. Let me. Well, I'm, I, I kind of lost track of what you're asking, but. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably just as well. <laughs> All right. Here's the example we did, and, and this should, uh, this should uh, help you out. Right now, the, the root of this is my C colon slash Java. That corresponds to what I had in the diagram is the root. All right. Now, underneath this is EDU. It doesn't, have to be. doesn't yeah, it doesn't have to be. It's just that this is sort of the starting point. That's what I'm calling the root. Everything is underneath that. Then EDU, Lorraine CCC, CISS, Java, conversions, and then GUI. Okay? So the other thing I do, before we jump too far ahead, is I have to define in these classes the package that it belongs in. So I have on the first line of that the package that it belongs in. Okay, now I'm going to go to my uh, command prompt. And then I'll start in what I've turned my application root, which is slash Java. So there I am, edu, so I'm considering that the root. Now, I have to make a, 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 a folder where it's going to put the classes, because I don't want the classes intermixed with the source code. I want to put the classes somewhere else. So I'm going to make the folder, and I'll do it in the command line. And this is what, in your example, was the classes directory. All right. It doesn't have to be the word classes, but it seems like a good choice, right? So I'll make directory classes. All right. So now I have my edu folder, where my source is going down through a bunch of folders, and I have my classes folder that right now is empty that's where the classes are going to be. So now I can say Java C dash D classes. And what that says is the compiled classes. Don't put with the source like you normally do. All right. Instead, put it in that class folder. Put all the classes that you compile in that classes folder. Mm -hmm. Repeat that, please. Right. Right. Uh, yes. In order to reference it the way I am, you'd have to be in that level. I could reference it. I could be. I could be putting a class somewhere else, but then I'd have to put the full path to it. Or you could be somewhere else, yeah, and do that. But, you know, for me, it's like, why, why tempt fate? Why, why make it harder? So I'm just going to go in the root. I'm going to create my classes there. If I decide I want to put them somewhere else, 
I do. The main thing is I don't want to mix the source and the classes. I just want the class, the compiled code. Yeah, I wasn't sure if classes was some type of code. Reserved word? No. Yeah. Yeah, no. The dash D is, and what that's saying is put the classes in a directory, dash D. What directory? Well, yeah, what directory? The directory name that follows this. So I could call this anything, uh, but it does seem like that directory has to exist. It won't make the directory for you. So edu Lorraine ccc slash ciss slash java slash gui slash first gui dot java does its thing compiles it and now if we look in classes you'll see those folders, yeah, get created down for all the classes. So there's the EDU, there's the Lorraine CCC, CISS, uh, Java, GUI, and there is the first GUI class. Right. But yeah, you're right in, in, in the sense that that word classes isn't a reserved word. That's simply the name of the folder that it is. And, and I could put a, some other path to it and it would create that. It, it won't create that folder there. It will add to that folder. All right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like like thinking hypothetically like what if we were deploying Java packages all over the place and maybe engineering had some Java code for, for some of their classes. All right. Their packages would be could still be EDU, still Lorraine CCC because they're part of this college, but there they wouldn't use CISS. They would use engineering or whatever. All right. And then they could go down and have those. That way, if they had classes, that would guarantee um, that there wouldn't be a conflict in the, in the scheme that, that, they were, that they were naming it. So, you know, you know, think in terms of an organization. You know, myorganization.com, let's say, is their domain. Uh, maybe the uh, marketing department has their Java classes. The accounting department has theirs. Uh, engineering has theirs, in which case it would be com, my corporation, engineering, com, my corporation, marketing, com, my corporation, accounting. All right. That's kind of a standard way that most organizations... The, 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 st the standard way, again, again, remember what your goal here. Your, your goal is that a package ought to be, a package name ought to be unique worldwide. All right. Well, how do you guarantee that something's unique worldwide? Well, that's kind of hard, right? But one thing that we do know is unique worldwide are, are domain names, right? So, for example, um, let's just think. Uh, I, I, it wouldn't be a good idea, for example, for us to make our packages LCCC, right? Because there's Lorraine County Community College. There is Lakeland County Community College. There could be Lucas County Community. There could be a lot of LCCCs worldwide, and which one is the real LCCC? We know we are, right? But they might have some flimsy claim to be, all right? So there'd be some controversy. But the one thing we know for sure is a domain name will prohibit those conflicts because there is one, LorraineCCC.edu. There's not two of them. There's not another one some other place. So we know that that part of it will guarantee that our packages created as part of this organization is unique. All right? Now, within that domain, it's pretty much up to that organization to figure out how to do it. I picked, the, you know, I, the way I said it hypothetically is probably a very reasonable way, by departments or by division. Maybe there'd be, maybe there'd be an additional level and say business and then CISS just in case you know, who knows, one of the other 
disciplines within business uh, had that. Uh, but again, the, the sort of thought, the, the thought is sort of like the domain will keep people outside of your organization from using your package names. Within your organization, that's your job to come up with a standard to figure out how to make sure that those packages are unique. All right. Other questions? Right. Um, yeah, we created an access file. Mm -hmm. I have a, a note in my notes, star dash cdmf mm -hmm. access dot text, and then um, that jar. Um, and that creates our jar file called that jar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can, can you write, can you can you tell me the command again so I can write it down? It was jar uh -huh. dash, dash C V M. Base edu. So this is a command that we had. All right, let's dissect this command. Jar says I want to. Jar says I want to do something jar-like. All right. Dash C means I want to create a jar. All right. Everything after the dash are what are called command switches or command arguments. They they give more specifics about the command. So yeah, I want to do something with a jar. What do I want to do? I want to create it. V stands for verbose, I believe. Uh, that that gives you uh, detailed listings of what it's doing. M means that this is the manifest file. F means this is the name of the jar file that I want to create. And edu would be sort of the root package that I want to do. So by extension, for this to work, I would have to be in the folder above that edu folder. All right? Because that's the only place that I can simply say edu and it will find that folder, all right? Um, so it's what I've been calling like the applications root, all right? That, that same folder where I did the compile from, I would, I would uh, or I'm sorry, actually I would do this within the classes folder. In other words, if I was doing this, I would be within this folder, the classes folder, because my edu folder that contains the classes is in that folder. So, so not, the not, not, yeah, not the folder. Well, it, it is the folder above the EDU, but which EDU? We want the classes, not the source code. So in the yeah, in the classes folder, right. Because remember, we're making a jar off of the compiled code. Yeah, that's where the, that's where yeah where, where the compiled object code is. Other questions? Yes. Right. Uh, let, let me see if I understand your question. What you're saying is, if I have two packages, all right, within my organization, and I import both of them, all right, am I importing two classes with the same name? Yeah. Right. Uh, something wouldn't work. I can guarantee it. What you'd have to do is this. Remember, 
um, to refer to a class, you can refer to a class two ways. One way is you can import that, the package, right? The other way is to give the full package name of it. So, for example, if I had, if I had, let's say, an EDU, Lorraine, CCC, uh, I had CISS, and I had a computer class. In engineering, I had a computer class. How could I use both of those in my same code? Right, is, is the essence of the question. What I would do is I would do this. I'd import one of these. So I would import, just hypothetically, um, edu Lorraine CCC dot CISS dot computer. And then I could say computer C equals new computer. And that would make a CISS computer. If I wanted to make an engineering computer then, what I would have to do is say edu Lorraine CCC dot eng computer E equals new edu Lorraine blah 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 dot computer. And that would be an engineering. So what I could do is I'd import one of them and then the other one I would use the full package name to access it. And you should be okay if you did that. All right, because um, again, you know, there, there, there's two ways to, to, to refer to something that isn't in the current package that, that you're in. You can either give uh, an import at the beginning, or you can uh, just use the full package name. Oh, that's a good question. So if I imported, mm, I don't think that would work. I, I'm not 100% sure, but that doesn't sound right to me. Because I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that would fly. Because I think it would actually import both of those. Yeah, I, I don't know. Suffice to say, that won't be a question on the final. But I mean, I, it is an interesting scenario. Pardon, pardon me? Uh, this one. Not on this one, the next one, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. On the, uh, the Java Web Start? I don't think we're creating a Java web star page. I think I asked to create an applet. Did the applet okay. No, no. You'd, you'd, you'd have to have a web server installed and you'd have to be able to configure it and all that and I didn't want to mess with that. Not on the phone. Right. Um, for that, there'd probably be more like conceptual questions about what Java Web Start is and what the advantages it would have over other means of deployment and, and so on. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And plus to, plus to make it so you can give me a jar file instead of giving me, you know, um, five different dot class files. Other questions? All right. The final is 
8 p.m. on Monday, April 30th. Um, up in the lab, yeah. So it's up in the lab. Um, I have not completely made the final yet, um, but you know I know the structure it will take, and and is is what I described. I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, don't spin your wheels on a question. You know, be be cognizant of the point value uh, of each question, and you know, <laughs> I, I I hate to encourage what what people call like gaming the test, but you know, it's almost like the, the, the presidential elections, you know, if, uh, if a state's only worth a couple electoral votes, they're not going to spend a lot of time campaigning in it. Well, if a question is worth, you know, a certain amount of points, you, you kind of want to spend time in proportion to the point value. So don't, you know, don't blow 10 points agonizing over getting the wording on a one point question right, I, I guess is, is, is the thing. You know, we all want to do everything perfectly, but, you know, be aware of the bigger picture as well. All right. That's all I had. We'll see you up in LAM.